of spreading the word about Jesus and the plan of which he came to fulfill. When the Holy Spirit was came, then the apostles began to spread the gospel. So when the Holy Spirit has not come and we say we are going for evangelism, we won't get any soul. Because we are going on our own accord. So we will not get any soul. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He will lead us to do what evangelism. So one of the works of the Holy Spirit is He guides us to do or spread the gospel. That you have the, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will be a soul winner. You will be a soul winner. You understand? You will be a soul winner. So we, I find it difficult to say most of us we are baptized by the Holy Spirit, but then we can't win souls. Then there is something wrong somewhere. You will be a soul winner. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Let me read quickly. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know as certainly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know as certainly that, Jesus, that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Both Lord and Christ. That is what the book of Acts is saying. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. So now the question here is, what evidence did Peter present to prove that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? What evidence did Peter present to prove that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? You don't get a question? Thank you. What evidence did Peter present to prove that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? <laughs> uh, the scholar is Mr. James. What evidence did Peter present to prove that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? I was not here. <laughs> <laughs> because we you just came in long ago. We just. Uh, just came uh, around, don't questions. <laughs> 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 uh, I wasn't here in the beginning of the year. Mm. Yes, those who were here in the beginning, but I left you. What evidence did Peter presented to prove that Jesus is both the Lord and Christ? Baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm, I wouldn't buy that. <coughs> Baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm, no. What evidence? Okay, let me read this. I have a question. Yes, read. What's the difference between Lord and Christ? What's the difference between Lord and Christ? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. And who made Jesus Christ the Lord? That's what we are asking. So it's Lord means who made Jesus Christ God? But he said to the Bible that, that they will know that what? Uh, yeah, no, from you put back. Both Lord and Christ. So it's two different things. Yeah. And I'm telling you that is somebody has made Jesus Christ Lord. So if Jesus Christ is one personality. But somebody has made him love. That is the difference. It's two different things. Now, let me help you here. He said, Men of Israel, listen to Peter. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you are taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death. Here is Peter speaking. 
I'm helping you here with a question. One more time. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. And now the question goes, what evidence did Peter present to prove that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? What evidence? Through the speech of Peter. Yes, Brother Iman. Uh, what I heard is that uh, when uh, Jesus Christ came to the office and uh, he gave miracles, signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. So that, that is I mean, evidence like that Peter uh, showed to the people of Israel. Amen. Amen. That Jesus worked miracles, man. That God raised him from the dead too. And that he fulfilled the prophecy of David that the Holy Spirit, one would not see decay. That the Holy Spirit, one will not see decay. Because he, he died and then rose up. So he never decayed. These are the evidence that Peter was presenting to the people. Of what did Peter accuse those in the crowd? Of what did Peter accuse those in the crowd? Uh, students, what in your Bible studies? Of what did Peter accuse us of the crowd? Let me help you. Do we read our Bibles at home? Let's be honest. How many of us read our Bibles this week? From Monday to Friday, how many times? Just yesterday. Just yesterday. Sarah? Monday. Once in a week. Yeah, that's why he's saying once in a week. Christian? Two times a week. Only Sunday. This week you didn't. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. She's honest. She said, honestly, this week she didn't read the Bible. Honestly, she didn't read the Bible. She Yeah, but she ate from Monday to Friday to Sunday. All right, Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know. I so believe that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So of what did Peter accuse those in the crowd? You still don't get it. Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. Whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And the question is, of what did Peter accuse those in the crowd? And I'm reading that Peter is telling them that therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Yes. If you don't get this thing, then <laughs> I wonder how you pass right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me try. Let's try. I think he accused them for crucifying Very yes. good. Yes. Very yes. good. <laughs> Is accusing them of what crucifying the Messiah. Yes, yes. that is the that is the answer. I was expecting because what I read, it was like it's evident. Yeah, it was, it was just blinking. Man, I was blinking. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Can I contribute to her question? Yes. The difference between the Lord and the Christ, right? Yeah. Lord means owner. Lord means owner. That's why we say land, Lord. 
if you have it. Right? So if you say Jesus Christ is Lord, that means he owns you. Alright? You understand the Lord one? And Christ means the anointed one. The anointed one. So if God anoints you with the Spirit, you have the Spirit of Christ. So Christ is the anointed one, sent by God, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Good. What was the response of the crowd? What was the response of the crowd? Now, Peter has crucified them. Peter has accused them that they have crucified the Messiah. And what did the crowd also say, according to the scriptures read? Hmm? What should we do is a question. But what did they do? What was their response? What shall we do? Yes? This was a question. So what happened? They were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. Let's clap for her. They were cut to the the heart and fire and then they ask themselves, what shall we do? <coughs> that is it. What does their response indicate? They were cut to their hearts and they cried and they asked themselves, what shall we do then? So what does their response indicate? What does it shows? Yes, what I get from? Repentance. Repentance, that is good. I know repentance, but I want a, a one way. Yes. They repented for what they did. Let's clap for him. That is the way. They showed remorse. Yes. They showed remorse. They sorry. They regretted for their deeds. Believe in what Peter has said about Jesus. A desire to take some action to show the change of heart. They were cut in the heart. They were ready to recompense. They were ready to come back to the truth. They were ready to come to the line of the Holy Spirit to, to not to they crucified Jesus Christ right, but then they still have to proceed and receive what is ahead of them. To what might you compare what they felt as at this point? In your life, what the, the apostles were feeling to what can you compare in your life at this point? They, they were cut to their hearts and they cried out, and then they believed in what Peter said. And then they asked themselves, what shall we do? They regretted their deeds. And then we are asking you further that what at this point can you compare in your own personal life in relation to what they did? It's a feeling. How they felt. Have you ever come in, in your life, in your personal life, that you've done something which you were not supposed to do? And then later on, you were told the truth, and then you were so regretful, and you cried out, and you decided, ah, this then I wouldn't do it anymore. That is what we're trying to relate. Whatever we study the Bible is in relation to our personal lives. 
that the, the apostles, they were tied to their hearts, they regretted because they were supposed to do something that they didn't do. And now they've known the truth about what they were supposed to do. So in your own life, that is the indication. That is how Bible studies is supposed to be. Whatever the context is, we relate it to our life, we relate it to the church, to the country, to the nation, to the current circumstances going on. Because the Bible is our guideline. All right, the feeling that you have made a terrible mistake, which is irreversible. Irreversible means you can't turn it back. That you thought you were right to kill someone, but have now found out that you were wrong about everything. What will you do? You thought when you were killing the person you were right. But now you have found out that you've killed an innocent person. What will you do? You regret. <laughs> Your regrets will not bring the person back to life. I can't remember in Atosu, they said one one guy just climbed somebody's um, uh, wall and they stoned him to death, thinking that he was a thief. But later on they realized he wasn't a thief. But then he's already there. So will you go to the police station and report? That you've killed, yes, report yourself that you've killed somebody innocent. <laughs> yes, who, who, which of us will do that? But am I going to do that? In normal sense, yeah, you have to do it. But we human beings, selfish, I think, it will take us a long time <laughs> to, to come to our senses that we have to go and report ourselves. But some people will do it. But you, will you do it? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, All right so you go and report that he has killed an innocent soul. But first of all, I'll, I'll not put myself into that situation. You may never be my brother. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, 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 have, we have different types of people in this world. Do you understand? All right, I get you. Before you go to into that situation, you have to sit down and think about if I will not wish my brother to do that to me, I will never also do that to my brother. You understand? So I will make sure I won't put myself into that situation. That's a good point that he will put himself in his brother's shoes and then he will also feel the pain of his brother and will not hurt his brother. <laughs> Let's know the various parts of this verse. What does Peter mean by repent? What does Peter mean by repent? What was he trying to say that repent? If I come to you and I tell you repent, what am I trying to tell you? Yes. It's a quick one. Repent. What I tell you is repent. What am I trying to tell you? Yes, but I pray. To stop the evil things I'm doing, let's work for you. That's what you What does Peter mean when he says for them to be baptized? What does Peter mean when he says to them to be baptized? Like, is it pouring of water upon them? Or baptized? Or pouring oil, oil on their head? What does Peter mean when he says to them to be baptized? What does he mean? Come on, I know the answer is in your mouth. Give it out. To be immersed in water. To be immersed in water. That is it. He just mentioned the right word. Let's clap for him. <laughs> Would this have seemed to be like a strange thing for them to do? Would this have seemed to be like a strange thing for them to do? To be baptized by immersion in water. Is it? Would it have seemed to be strange to them? Sister Sandra, yes or no? No. No, she thinks. Why? Uh, because for the first place, they have regretted them. Yeah, I think they would like to. I don't know how to put them. I don't know how to put this punishment. They would like to be yeah, baptized. Yeah. And going away from this. Okay, that's good. But then the real answer is 
No, because they wouldn't find it strange because the Jews have the customs of Christ's life. If you repent, you are supposed to baptize by immersion. If only you have shown true repentance, baptism by immersion to it was occasional, was something they knew about. Was something they knew about. So it wouldn't have been something strange. The idea of going under the water as a sign of cleansing would have been very familiar to them. To comply with the law of Moses, for example, they were at the south end of themselves, of the temple grounds, 46 pools for people to use to cleanse themselves before they came to the temple area. So the main important or the motive of going under the water is you are being cleansed. You are being cleansed and then you are coming out as whole as that of Jesus Christ did. What does Peter mean by the name of Jesus Christ? By the name of Jesus Christ. When I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. <laughs> what, what do I mean? In the name, there are some of the things you have to understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out. Yeah, what do you know? In the name of Jesus Christ, get out. What does it mean? What's the name of us? The name of Jesus is that after Jesus died for us, we took his blood, we came close to God, and we will encourage you out in the name of Jesus. We will say in the name of Jesus, and God remembers us, and Son Jesus, we are power in the name of Jesus. So anytime you pray, and you say that, and you pray, God doesn't know about the name. moment you say, like, in the name of Jesus, you remember that. The death of Jesus for us in the sins, he will have the blood of us for sins and just things. So that's why I know about the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. But he said, when you are praying, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, cancer, leave. That it means that we are saying, under the authority, under in the name of Jesus Christ, it means under the authority of Jesus Christ. In the name, under the authority. You see, most of us, we, we use it, but we don't understand. Say, so in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every witch in my house to die. But <laughs> you don't understand what we are saying. Your whole family will be away. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your whole family away. A person becomes a Christian by believing in Jesus, desiring to change his or her life to be a follower of Jesus. And then by being baptized to mark the burial of the former life and the beginning of new life. So baptism actually introduces you to another life. That is why you shouldn't be forced to baptize. If you think you are you are cool with your old life and then you are not ready to change, you stay there. Because baptism is actually going to transform you to another life. What you used to do before, you can't do them. Why does Peter tell the crowd to baptize? Why? Don't be scared. Maybe what you're saying is right. Why is Peter telling the crowd to baptize? Uh, yes, what I think? Your idea is the correct one. Let's clap for him. For forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins. To cleanse them. To be cleansed from their sins. When you read Acts chapter 22, verse 16, it also talks about what's our way of sins. Galatians 3 27, we baptize in Christ, and also talk about that. Romans 6 4, be buried with Christ and raised to a new life. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21, baptism does now save you. How many do what Peter has asked? How many of them did what Peter asked them? This is a huge figure. How many of them did? If I read you, you get it correctly. Well, it's a figure. Yeah, but how many of them do you think believed and did what Peter did? I've said it here before. In, in one way or the other, in my fiction. How many of them believed and did what Peter told them to do? Nobody. 
must come in. If you don't answer this question, we punish you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, and I'm just saying you are going to punish those who don't answer this question. Uh -huh. If you know, come and face by your presiding here. <laughs> those who don't know will get punishment. Yes. How many of us know? How many believe in what we did and followed? <laughs> I said, if you do come and pay five, you pay five euros. <laughs> you, you have said that. You said what? Three thousand. Yeah. Three thousand. Three thousand people believe. You see. You said. Yeah. After she said, or before she said. Hey, I will say it's bad. Three thousand, three thousand. <laughs> what is happening daily? Others were being saved. What does the expression added to them mean? There was now in existence of a body saved people. A body saved people. Three thousand people are being saved. God, for he is the only one who truly knows if a person has believed, repented, and been baptized for the right reason. Can, can a human being, can a pastor or an apostle know that a person has repented and baptized for the right reason? No. Someone saying no. Yes, why do you say no? This school of thought saying no. Brother Michael, stop the paper. No. Brother Jeffrey, no. I say no. And Andrews, no. Sarah, no. Sandra, no. So, but I think you, you believe it's yes. <laughs> yes, you have to know those who believe it's a no and a yes. No. Is it because and I said no, all of you are saying no. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe? How many of us believe? What? Yes or no? <laughs> you can't be in the middle, you should choose one. So people are saying yes or no. <laughs> Do you think a pastor will, who will feel it? Do you think, um, um, the question is, do you think a pastor will know that somebody has been, somebody has repented and been baptized for the right reason? Is it? Mm -hmm. Pastor, Maybe you will know. Nobody knows. Nobody Is that maybe you will know? No, you will be in Then all the pastors will know. <laughs> the last question. Peter said to one man that when he saw the Holy Spirit come on his household and they could speak in tongues, it would be like when the Holy Spirit had come on the apostles at the beginning. That is why Peter called that day the day of Pentecost. Who, which man did Peter spoke to? That name is not common. You hardly hear it, but in the Bible. Peter told one man that the Holy Spirit would come upon his household and they also could also speak in tongues when they believe. Which man did Peter speak to? You are cracking your mind. <laughs> are you ready? Really, huh? I will have marvel. Who can get this question? Yes, what I know. Try, try, you get it, it's in your mouth, give it up. <laughs> you don't know, oh sorry. Mr. Lips? I'm I'm asking the, 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 the Bible scholars before they 
Scholar, scholar one, Enoch the, does not know. Scholar two, Mr. James does not know. Which lecture does it start? What's the name of the man? The letter C. Cornelius. 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 Let's go. Cornelius, that is the name. Who made Christ to be Lord? God. You said God. You see, sometimes you are, you are scared of your answers, but it's true. Who made Christ to be Lord? It's God. What do the people do on the Pentecost to show their belief in Jesus Christ? They asked, what shall we do? To indicate their faith and they obeyed. Who added the saved to the body of those already saved? God. <laughs> Before we end the discussion, as we usually do our custom, one gentleman, one lady, a summary of what we've learned, any question to be asked. Before I ask my questions. If you don't ask me questions today, I will ask. So, Phil, where are you going? You don't want to summarize. Or should I choose from the ladies? Sitting you. <laughs> From the men's side, uh, I'm not just Jeffrey today. Um, but the tips, you summarize for the men's side. Don't say you didn't come in. <laughs> That's your usual excuse. For the men's side, yes, please. What you've learned. Well, it is not something long, anything you've learned. What do you learn from the study today? And from the lady side, I'll choose the comfort or gift. You just gave. Oh, but, but I didn't submit it for you. So right after you finish, Stakon, what do you do? Yes, true repentance or true baptism makes you automatically your sins forgiven. Yeah. Because that's the initial, that's the reason for baptism. Yeah. We are baptizing so that we will be forgiven of our sins by immersion. We are washing our sins away. Amen. Any question? No question. Oh, then let's close our eyes. Right now, as we close our eyes, I want you to pray that the Spirit will help you to understand what you've learned today. Just pray that personal prayer, that you'll be able to walk in it. That what you've learned today, that you will not just be just a listener, that you go accordingly with the word and you will walk in the light of the word. I want you to pray, personal prayer, that you walk in the, that the word will stick into your head, that the word will stick with you, 
that you will abide in the word and the word will abide in you also. That the word will be your portion, that the word will direct your path, that the word will be a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. Thank you. 